Hi, my name is Tim and welcome to today's video on an introduction to RC electronics. In this video, we're just going to go over very top level instructions about how to take a radio control set and uh, hitch it up. Let's take a look at what we'll be talking about today. And what I will do is in just top level detail, explain what a transmitter does, what a receiver does, an electronic speed control, the servos, the battery, how to properly um, connect them, and how to bind the transmitter to the receiver. There is a lot of fancy things that go on behind the scenes. You'll hear me use the term from time to time, technical magic. It's just stuff happens to make our systems work so we can enjoy it. If you want more information on how some of these technical things work, it's all available on a Google search or YouTube search. This is just a top level video of how to hook everything up and get flying quickest. Okay, what we're gonna talk about in this video is how all these things work together and how to connect everything on the airborne part and how to make sure the transmitter <clears throat> is communicating properly to what is in the airplane. All this stuff is in the airplane. We have the transmitter, we have a receiver, we have two servos that'll actually move the control surfaces. This is a three channel model, so elevator, rudder. This is the electronic speed control that is connected to the battery, uh, to the motor rather is connected to the propeller and this is the battery through technical magic is connected through here provides power to the motor the receiver and the servos and anything else like lights on the airplane again further details as we go through the video on how all these things work okay what i want to do now is give you an introduction to the transmitter this is the transmitter that i use it is a spectrum DX6 is the model number. The 6 stands for 6 channels. A channel is one function. I fly airplanes. It's the same for a car or a boat. In this case, on the right side, one channel is elevator. Up elevator, down elevator. It's spring-loaded to the middle. Left bank and right bank. Spring-loaded to the middle. The throttle, low throttle, high throttle, and it stays in place. And then rudder. So these are four channels. The additional ones are flaps, landing gear. There's a bunch of different functions we're not going to go into because this is an introduction to it, but they are available for uh, further uses. This is the computer screen right here. We'll go into a bit of detail on that later. And these are the trims by clicking those up and down. It's a very small incremental movement of the control surface to literally trim the airplane if it is in a slight dive when it's flying. Give a couple clicks of up trim it'll just move the elevator ever so slightly up to maintain that it's level flight note that this is a spectrum system modelers tend to use or have a favorite brand of radio control electronics <clears throat> back in the 90s i was a futaba person with the new advanced systems advanced by definition is 2.4 gigahertz it's digital computer technology I just like Spectrum. It's a relatively new brand. It came out about 15 years ago. They were the first ones to do these spread spectrum techniques, and they just do a good job in everything they do. I just like Spectrum a lot. And one thing that's a really neat feature of this DX6 is the antenna. Notice the stub antenna. There's nothing uh, fragile or pointing about it like in the older systems. It's all combined for a um, very powerful signal, and nothing can go wrong. <clears throat> also, keep in mind that there are batteries in, in back. I have four uh, AA batteries. I carry a fresh set of my um, uh, field box in case those go low, and um, that's that. What we're going to do now is just take an overview, a very top look at both of the computer screen and how we can use that to operate our model on the Spectrum D DX6 transmitter. So this is the on-off switch right here. We're going to go ahead and turn it on. It just takes a second or two to boot up. This is the welcome screen, if you will. This little picture of an airplane means that the model we've selected is an airplane. You could have a glider, you could have a helicopter. There's different computer functions depending on each one. This is a countdown timer, five minutes. It's just a warning that I've flown for five minutes to be thinking about um, landing. This is the name that I've given this model, foam glider, notice model number seven. The library of the Spectrum computer has room for 250 models, so I don't think too many people are going to get close on that. Notice also there is a battery readout. This is 4.8 volts. 
And that's important because I literally put on the bottom here from the manual 4.3 is a minimum volts. This is getting low enough. I'd probably replace the transmitter batteries with uh, fresher ones just so we don't go down on that. Finally, the trim indications on the side. Uh, I will just, um, for, for the elevator, for example, if I move it down, you see how the little square goes down? It's just a measure of where the trim is on the airplane. Okay, now we're going to go inside the menu and we are going to take the first steps of binding the transmitter to the receiver. Okay, now we're going to talk about a very important thing that is an absolute must do before you can use these computer systems, and that's called binding. What happens with these new advanced um, transmitters of 2.4 gigahertz, and by the way, I don't think you can buy the older systems in 72 megahertz of channels anymore. I don't think they even make them. The beauty of the 2.4 gigahertz is the transmitter here, through technical magic, is linked up with one receiver for the model selected here. So in this example, I have a foam glider. Once we do our binding, this transmitter with foam glider selected will be have an electronic handshake with this receiver such that the only transmitter that can control this receiver is the one that is bound to it, my transmitter. What that means is, as an RC flyer, you could have 10 people flying at your field. All of their receivers in the air are binded to their transmitters. When you turn on your transmitter, it has no effect on anybody in the air. Their 10 transmitters cannot affect you because this receiver only recognizes this transmitter. It's a tremendous safety feature that allows all of us to fly whenever we want without fear of frequency interference. Okay, now we're going to bind <coughs> this receiver to the transmitter. Again, this is done one time only. Once the receiver is binded to the transmitter and that model is selected, everything is fine. All you have to do is turn it on. So looking at everything right here, what we have to do is we have to power up the system. This is a three cell LiPo battery, 11.1 .1 volts, and I'm going to plug it in to the electrical system here. Notice the electronic speed control is flashing. Anytime you have a flashing light, that means something's wrong. In this case, the receiver is not yet binded to the transmitter, so the electronic speed control has no inputs from the receiver to do anything. It's a warning that you've got to do something, which is what we're going to do now. We're going to simply bind this transmitter to the receiver. So what we do to start the binding process, and again, this is a really neat, neat feature of Spectrum. In the old days to binding, you'd literally have to have a dedicated bind plug that plugged into the throttle of the bind port here to let it bind. It was complicated, blah, blah, blah. This Spectrum system has bypassed all that. This little signal thing here is actually a large button the size of my finger, and I'm going to press this button now. That flashing light is the receiver telling us, I, I am not bound to a transmitter. I need to see the special bind signal, and when that uh, happens, I'll be happy. To do that, we turn on the transmitter. And we're going to go to a special function. This is the menu. This scroll wheel here, we can either turn it or press it. We're going to press it, and we have, um, if we go down to the bottom of this list, there is a special menu called System Setup. And you can see that right there. The System Setup is are for things that are used one time, naming the model, binding, etc. So it warns us it's going to turn off the RF energy in case we're flying or something. And this is the system setup screen for things that are done just once. And we're going to go down to a section that calls bind. See that right there? We press this scroll button and it says foam glider, put receiver into bind mode. We've done that with a flashing light, then select bind. So we roll this, there's bind. Now watch this, when I hit bind, It'll start binding. You'll actually hear the transmitter speak to you. Binding. Transmitter low battery. And now we're, we're, we're bounded. Notice the light is steady on the receiver. This 
is the light is out in the electronic speed controller and the servos work. Notice also that we're down to 4.5 volts. You can hear the um, transmitter saying transmit a low battery. A, one a wonderful feature of Spectrum that says, hey, knucklehead, replace the batteries in your transmitter, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, we just replaced the new batteries in the transmitter. I look, you learn something every day in RC. When it sees the new batteries in there, it lost the binding. Somehow the binding was connected to the previous batteries. No problem. We simply push the button, flashing light, rebind it, and now everything is working. So now let me plug in the motor. These are the three bullet connectors right here. We'll have one, two, and now on the throttle, I'm going to hold this up, there's the motor operating with the throttle. So everything's connected. The transmitter is talking to the receiver. The electrical power is from the battery. The electrical power goes into the electronic speed control, which has a bunch of technical magic. It'll take the 11.1 volts from the battery, and through this little wire right here, it will provide the power to the receiver and to the servos, as well as the motor, these at a full 11 volts, to include the throttle of the motor. Notice we have a steady light in the transmitter, or the receiver rather, that means everything's okay and the servos are right here. What we're going to talk about now are connecting wires, in particular a servo to the receiver, the ESC to the receiver, and the batteries um, to the ESC and the motors, and just some cautions, polarity, how to do it. So again, here is our setup right here. The battery, the polarity is extremely important. Red is positive, black is negative. These XT60 connectors take care of that for you because there's a very distinct curved upper side, a flat lower side. There's literally no way physically to connect these backwards. So that kind of prevents anything bad with connecting the battery. Going to the three wires to the motor, these are the three connectors. They're just needed for any outrunner motor. There is no polarity associated with the connectors. However, when you connect in the three connectors, the motor will run in a certain direction to turn the propeller. If the motor runs backwards, to fix that, you take any two connectors, it does not matter which one, and just swap them out. So disconnect this one, connect it in here and vice versa, and the motor will reverse direction. You notice there's a little peep on the ESC. That is a safety feature. It just means it has power. The motor could operate if somebody were to move the controller like that. It's just a, a warning to anybody nearby that the, the system is hot, ready to go. Now let's talk a little bit about the connectors to the receiver. This is the same connector from the ESC to the receiver as the servos. You'll note on the connector, there are three wires. There is a black one, a red one, and a yellow one. The colors can vary a little bit. The middle one is always red. The black one could be brown or black. The yellow one could be yellow or white. I have no idea why they vary in color, but they all have the same function. The black one is ground. The red one is power, in this case, five volts. The yellow, the yellow one is a signal that is the information from the transmitter, whether it's a servo or whatever, to move the throttle. It is the yellow is the signal. So the question comes up, how do you know where to plug them into the receiver? It's impossible to see in the video, but here in the plastic is a very small S plus minus signal voltage ground. What that means is the ground or the black is at the bottom, and that's all that it means. If you were to install them backwards with the, with the black, the ground up top, it'll do no damage. It simply won't work because it has to be installed correctly. And what we do is we just pick the appropriate place and 
slide them in and everything works. One other thing you'll note that's a little bit frustrating, I don't know why they do it, but on this receiver, it's a very small lightweight receiver, you'll see it's channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's a 6 channel uh, transmitter. The question is, well, what, which channel is throttle elevator rudder? How do I know that? In the olden days, they would put rudder elevator throttle on here, they don't do that. You have to do a little Google search. I'll show a screen how to do that to find out what the pins are. Number one is throttle, number two is aileron, number three is elevator, number four is rudder. And I just write that down to plug it in. So we're coming to the conclusion here. I just want to mention a few other items. You notice on the LiPo battery connection, we have the connection here to the system. I haven't said anything about this. This is what we call a balance plug. It plugs into the balance board. This is a necessary safety feature for when we are charging these batteries. This is three cells due to the technology, the technical magic of the LiPo batteries. Those three cells have got to be balanced in terms of their charging energy for safety to avoid one cell overcharging more than the other. You simply plug this into the balancing board, which is a standard feature of any new charger these days, and that will ensure that the um, cells are properly balanced as they're charging, and that's just a standard feature for uh, today's radios. The final thing I'd like to mention is we went over this, and remember, elevator up, down, left, right for the uh, bank, the throttle, and then the rudder. This is what is called a mode two with this setup with the ailerons and elevator here, throttle and rudder here. There are mode one transmitters out there where the rudder function is over here, the aileron is here. It's just a preference in the United States, virtually all transmitters are mode two. You can swap this to mode one if you open it up and change springs and everything, just a heads up. So light means that there is signal going on to the system. Just always be aware when your model is on. And the final thing I want to mention is, notice we have Model 7 here, foam glider. It's very important that when you fly that you select the model that is binded to your transmitter. What will happen is you might have two models, the foam glider and then your Piper Cub. If you finish flying the foam glider and everything's fine, you plug your battery into the Piper Cub, you turn on the radio and nothing happens. The reason is you probably still have foam glider selected. Just go into the menu and I'll do that real quick here. So we go down to that system that you don't use that often, system setup. I'm gonna do that, this is model select. And I'll go to the peak pole here, select that and go back to the main menu. And there's a Pete and Paul right there. Just keep in mind, when this is turned on with Pete and Paul, it's looking for the Pete and Paul receiver that it has the handshake, the bind with. This is binded to the foam glider. It just won't work until I select foam glider, which is binded to that receiver. So again, thank you for joining me on this video. I have a continuing series of videos for RC beginners. Right after this, at the end, will be a um, link for that playlist if you'd like to see um, additional videos. Again, just an overview how to how to connect everything up, how to make it work, how to bind. Um, should be helpful for the first time RC flyer. Good luck, and we'll see you at the flying field.